Hey class, it's Bill with the continuing demo for week four, creating objects. In the first video, we looked at our example, our pizza class from Pete's Pizza, and we went through the UML class diagram that would be supporting this and talked about all of the things that you see there. And we ended up with a diagram like the one that you see at right. And we uh, we talk about parameters. We talked, or, you know, the, we see here the parameters. We see the types, and the diagram really tells us a lot. And remember that the minus indicate private things and the pluses indicate public things. So that's a useful thing to refer to here in this diagram. Putting it side by side with your coding window will be really useful. Now I don't have room for that but we'll refer back to this as needed. So let's get started with this pizza class. So I have a Pete's Pizza uh, project started and I want a new class and now all of this stuff makes sense that we do right the names that we type here now become very important because this is the class that we're creating notice that our typical things uh, that we've done in the past are not going to happen here a lot of the things like creating public static main and all of that not gonna happen right it's just not gonna happen so let me get started with just a simple intro here Okay, so I've in included the top stuff that we always do, and then we're going to uh, come down here and we're going to talk about what we need to do to get us started. Now, um, one of the things that, uh, that, that I want to do is we were given some constants in the exercise. We were given some diameters. I'm going to include those just for fun. So uh, that's easy and that's something that, uh, that we can do. So let me go ahead and put this in here. I'm going to paste that there. The constants here shouldn't be too much of a surprise, but uh, let's make sure that we understand exactly what we're typing because now that we're in a class, we have no excuse for not knowing knowing everything that we're typing. Public means it's going to be available to the outside world, so anybody who's using the class can get to this thing. Static, in this case, means it's available whether or not you have an object instantiated. So we'll be able to get to these constants from the class name even if they haven't created an object of this type. Final means you can't change the value once you've assigned it. So in this case, once you've assigned it on this line, you're done. You can't go and try to change it. So this is what makes it kind of a constant-ish thing. Data type, of course, and it's traditional to, uh, when you name constants, to use uppercase and use underscores to separate the words since camel casing is not possible. And of course, there we get the value. So I've grabbed these constants. That's that's cool. And I've made a little banner. Um, as our, my programs are getting longer, I want to sort of have a bannerized version of things. Now, I'm going to copy that, and I want to talk briefly uh, about another thing that we're going to do and that is I told you we were going to do some enumerated types and that is a, a really cool concept again your book doesn't cover it till fairly late but I'm going to um, read the types I'm going to introduce you to them because I think it's a really cool thing to see and it's very useful in this particular case so I'm going to make a public in this case I'm going to make a public enumerated type called pizza type what an enumeration does is an enumeration says, I'm going to tell you exactly what you can use here. I'm going to name the things that are legal. Only these things are legal. This is the complete list. Here you go. So for a pizza type, it's really easy, for instance, to say, look, you can have cheese pizza, you can have pepperoni pizza, and you can have veggie pizza, and that's the end of the list end of story. Now this is going to be really useful later. You'll see how easy it is to use these things and they have a lot of advantages. Now of course in the real world you wouldn't be doing stuff like this. You're taking business logic and you're encoding it, uh, thing, things that actually could change, and you're encoding it in code and that's really not a very good plan. You'd In the long run these would come from a database, these would come from a file. You certainly wouldn't encode this kind of business logic but you know, you got the, or, uh, you know, the things that are uh, that are going to change, right? The menu changes. You got to go change the code. Well, no, that's really not the ideal thing. But you get the idea. We're we're doing an academic exercise. So uh, now we're going to do the same thing with pizza sizes, and it's going to be small medium, large, and Excel. So uh, enums are very cool and we're going to use it as we go along, but let's let's uh, ignore it for now and then we'll, we'll come back. 
Uh, the other thing that we need to do is that we need to create um, a little spot for our private data, right? We said mostly for classes we want to have private data, not public data. So we're going to have a little space for that. And we're going to now go back to our diagram and let's see what it said, right? Remember all these things in this top section are going to become private data because they all have minuses there. So these declarations should now not surprise you. I'm going to have a private pizza type. That's one of my enum enumerated types up above. And I'm going to call it type. And I'm going to have a private thing that is of type pizza size. And it's going to be called size. Private. And I'm going to have a Boolean called thin crust, just because it's always fun to throw in a boolean because it makes you think a little differently here and there. And I'm going to have a private string called special instructions. So that's my private data. Again, private means people outside this code, people who are using the object, cannot directly affect type. They can only use the methods that we provide, and that means we will maintain control of keeping things accurate, doing error checking, all that kind of good stuff. So we have now created a little section for enumerated types, a little section for constants, a little section for private data. We could jump over to the Java docs and we will see that some of this stuff is already really cool in terms of how it's shown. You can drill down. It's kind of amazing actually what is created in the in the Java docs already for what we've done. And now we're ready to do constructors. So let me get rid of the rest of this stuff because this is not really very useful to us now. And uh, you know we'll come back and learn and put that in later. Okay, so the next thing is we're going to talk about the constructors. So let's actually do this in reverse. Let's let's do the full constructor, and let's do uh, let's do the one that it needs all the data. So for instance, we need to be passed of pizza type a thing called type. Now notice I have used the same word as I used up here for my private data. Don't get concerned. It's going to be okay, but it is an interesting question because uh, how can those two things work together and how will I know which one I'm referring to, etc. So uh, let's, let's use them, but then we'll just be aware of the fact that that could be an issue. I'm going to have a boolean called thin crust and I can have a string called special instructions. Now, you could certainly just use a different word so that you wouldn't get confused in your code, but I'll show you exactly how it works. Uh, and now we want to certainly get rid of this and let's go initialize our variables. Now, if I did this, right, that's certainly not going to work because it's going to say, wait a minute, what type are you talking about? Well, this thing, the local variable is going to take precedence. So you're trying to set the local variable equal to the local variable. That doesn't really work. Now, one thing to know about objects is when uh, classes is when you're working in this code, there is this implicit parameter. There's this implicit thing that says um, a way to talk about the object that I'm currently on. It is a reference. Remember, objects are always reference types. It is a reference to the current object that you're working with. And that special keyword is this. And if you put this in front of it, it says, hey, I'm talking about a object reference and then I'm drilling down to the type. So this line, even though it may look odd to your eye, is perfectly valid, legal, compiles, etc. And this says take this type here and assign it to the object's type private data. So that's a way to disambiguate those things so that it's clear which thing you're talking about, even if you use the same words. Right, so I'll fill this out, special instructions equals spec instruct. So now I have a full constructor where if they say I want a new pizza and they pass it four parameters that are of these types, it will assign them all in. That's great. All right, now let's make the other constructors while we're at it. Let's say uh, we want to have a constructor uh, that is uh, for the second one, right? The, the less, slightly less complicated one. So I'm going to uh, just copy this guy, okay, and I'm going to paste it. And this is the, you know, this is the uh, medium, right? This is the uh, type and size constructor. So in this case, they only give us the two, uh, the two things, right? They only give us two parameters. So we could say uh, these two things are fine, and then we could look back at our object diagram and say, well, this is false. 
right? And this is going to be an empty string because we haven't specified anything. Now, that's fine, except what we'd kind of like to do is we're going to end up, if we have any special things and error checking and all this other fancy stuff, we're ending up copying more code than we'd like. Uh, we actually duplicated, and remember, anytime you copy and paste some code, I'll say it before, I've said it before, I'll say it again, uh, you want to kind of really think about whether that's the right thing to do. And in this case, really, we don't want to have a bunch of code that does similar things. We'd like to really have uh, all the code together in one place that does this. So here is a cool way to do it. Rather than having four lines of code that duplicate all of this stuff, here is a magic way to do this. I can use the this reference to say this object and what I can do is say look I'm gonna just call the other constructor and I'm gonna pass in the following data I already have the full constructor so I'm just gonna call it with the type that's passed to me the size that was passed to me and I'm gonna say nope by default I don't get thin crust and by default there's no special instructions but that way if I have any other code up here that takes care of again error checking and doing special things and making sure other things are set up really I'm relying on the full constructor code to save me and to solve lots of problems for me now notice this is a strange construction and by the way these don't say void it's not public void it's just public pizza this is a strange construction using this and then you just call this but that's how you refer to another constructor and then I think you can see where we're going with the third one right when we're giving uh, the empty constructor right I'm just gonna do this and I'm gonna say this is the empty constructor and I'm passing no parameters and I bet you can guess what I'm gonna do I'm going to simply call this and, uh, and in this case, I have to give it a type, right? Because I can't just say type, so I'm going to say pizza type pepperoni, which is the default on the diagram, right? If you look back at the diagram, the defaults are described here after an equal sign. And so I'm going to say that, and I'm going to say pizza size. Now notice, this is our first time using our, cons our enumerations. So for an enumeration, you give the name of the enumeration, and then you put a dot, and then you put one of the values. And that's how, why I like en enums, because they're very clever in this way. So we've uh, created the three constructors, but really we're making sure that we're relying on the other constructors. And in fact, um, we, we could actually do this, right? We could actually do this and simplify this one because really we're calling the medium, you know, the type and size constructor, which is then calling it. So the defaults are in fewer places. So this is the general idea of creating constructors, the overloads that we're talking about here, and relying on the most complex constructor to do the most work and, and, and the rest of them just call it to pass along, you know, whatever defaults need to go. So we'll stop the video here because that's enough to blow your mind for the moment. We're con creating all these constructors and, uh, and passing the data uh, to make this as, as consolidated, keep the code as consolidated as possible and not have a bunch of copied and pasted code. So that's kind of an important set of, of the things to talk about. So go back and review this. We also talked about private data. We set up some constants. We set up some enums. All of that is cool and important. And let's stop there. And so you can ponder and then you can continue on the next video. Thanks for watching this one.